the day. This is Professor Nanette De Santos, who will discuss the continuation of Exercise 1.3 entitled The Structure of Crystalline Solid. The contents of the second part of the video will involve closest packing of HCP and cubic, calculations of radius, density, and X-ray diffraction, and the types of crystals. The most efficient way to pack spheres is the close pack arrangement, which has two variants. A single layer of close pack spheres is shown in the figure. Each sphere is surrounded by six others in the same plane to produce a hexagonal arrangement. Above any set of seven spheres are six depression arranged in hexag hexagon. In principle, all the six sides are the same, and any of them could be occupied by an atom in the next layer. From this slide, it's just show the exploded view of, a, of an hexagon or HCP arrangement. Let's take this number as our first example to calculate for the atomic radius of gold in picometer. So let us jot down all the given data, starting with the density, which is 19.3 gram per centimeter cube. Okay, so take note that this AU is FCC. So therefore, it follows that the number of atoms per unit cell is equal to 4 as it was computed from the six sides times the eight corner and the eight corner I mean okay so you have four atoms per unit cell and uh, aside from the density you are also given with with the with the FCC figure configuration so therefore, the A is equal to square root of 8 times R. So therefore, we can say that the radius, okay? So if we want to identify the radius, because we want what? We want to get the atomic radius. So the formula is just equal to A over the square root of 8, okay? But how can we get A? We can get A by calculating first, okay? Taking note that density is equal to mass per unit volume, okay? And we can get the volume, okay, so that we can substitute it here, okay, so that we can get the A, okay? If we can get for the volume, we can get for A, then we can solve for R. But before getting the volume, we need to identify first what is the mass of the what is the mass of the gold. Okay, so the mass can be calculated for the number of atoms for FCC. So we have four atoms per unit cell. And one atom. And one mole, sorry, so one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. And to get the mass, finally, we can use the molar mass. So therefore, you need to identify also the molar mass of, sil of gold, which is equal to 197. 0 0.0 grams per mole. So we'll multiply it with this so that we can cancel the mole. We can cancel the atoms and what we have is the mass per unit cell. So what is the mass? The mass in grams is equal to 1.3085 times 10 to the negative 21 grams. Okay, so after getting the mass, 
we can get now the volume. So the volume is equal to mass over the density. So if the mass is 1.3085 times 10 to the negative 21 grams, divided by 1.93, a 19.3, sorry. So this is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter cube. Therefore, we can get the volume and it's equal to 6.78 times 10 to the negative 23 cc or ml, okay? Cubic centimeter or ml. Then, finally, we can get the we can get the A because uh, the volume is equal to what? So the volume of the cube is equal to A cube. Therefore, A is just equal to the cube root of the volume. So hence, to get the cube root of the volume calculated, we can get 4.078 times 10 to the negative 8 centimeter, since this is centimeter cube, okay? Then finally, after getting, after getting the A, we can get now the R, wherein R is just equal to A over the square root of 8. So substituting what we calculated, okay, and then converting it further to what? To picometer, because that is what we need. The R in picometer. So for the conversion, we just have to convert it first to meter. So 1 cm is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 2 meter. Then 1 picometer is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 12 meter. Thus, we can calculate now the R, which is equal to 144.14 picometer. And the calculation show, that was shown here, okay, based on the example, on the part 2, part 3, part 4, Part 5 and Part 6 shows that the same answer is obtained, which is equal to 144 picometer. Crystalline solids or crystals have distinctive internal structures that in turn lead to distinctive flat surfaces or faces. The faces intersect at angles that are characteristic of the substance when exposed to x-rays. Each structure also produces a distinctive pattern that can be used to identify the material. The characteristic angles do not depend on the size of the crystal. They reflect the regular repeating arrangement of the component atoms, molecules, or ions in space. Using the Bragg equation, which was shown in this slide, which is equal to 2d times the sine theta is equal to n times the wavelength. So we can calculate now the distance between the plane using this formula. And to explain the principle behind X-ray diffraction, we can use this uh, example that tells us that the X-ray wavelength of 0.154 nanometer strikes an aluminum crystal. So the given R for aluminum, you have the wavelength, which is uh, that strikes it is equal to 0.154 nanometer at an angle of 19.3. And if you are to assume that the n is equal to 1, okay, and the conversion factor for nanometer to picometer is 1,000, 
1 nanometer is equal to 1,000 picometer. So we can calculate now for D using the Bragg equation. So if you are asked to get for the distance, okay, so using the formula of Bragg, so 2D sine theta is equal to N times the wavelength. So therefore, if you want to calculate only You want to calculate the distance or the spacing between the planes of aluminum atoms. It would be equal to N times the wavelength over 2 sine theta. So substituting what we have from this problem, you can say that your N is equal to 1. The wavelength is equal to 0.154 nanometer. If we want it to be equal to picometer, then we might as well change it first to picometer. So 1,000 picometer is 1,000 picometer is equal to 1 nanometer. So we can cancel nanometer. And what we have is the picometer. Then divide it by 2 sine 19.3 degrees. Then eventually we'll arrive with, you can calculate, and that would be equal to 232.97 picometer. Okay? So this is how we use the X-ray diffraction theorem using the Bragg equation. And from the second slide, it shows the computations, which is also arriving with the same answer that what we got on the first part. These are the different types of crystals. We have the ionic crystals. Particular example are cesium chloride, zinc chloride, sulfide, and calcium fluoride. So these are lattice points occupied by cations and anions, held together by electrostatic Attraction, hard, brittle, high melting point, but poor conductor of heat and electricity. For this example, we need to calculate for what? For the number of atoms for sodium and chlorine. So as you can see on the figure, if the gray color is for sodium, then we need to account for how, how many uh, how many et, how many parts? So how many one fourth? So we have one, two, three, four on each face. So meaning if it's a cube, then you need also another four at the side and then four at the center. So a total of 12. 12, uh, 12 one fourth. So therefore, plus, 1 at the center. So it tells us that the sodium atom follows the BCC. BCC arrangement. So therefore, we'll have 4 atoms for sodium. Whereas for chlorine, since as you can see, this is represented by the orange. So you have corner. Okay. So how many corners do you have for the chlorine atom? You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, 8 times 1, 8. Okay. So, this is 8 corner. And on the faces, the 6 faces of a cube, 6 faces times 1 half. Arriving also with the same number of atoms, which is also equal to 4 atoms. On this slide is the computation provided by the book and it tells us that the answers are all the same just like what we got. Okay, so for this problem, we need to calculate for the density. 
So if you are asked to solve for the density, which is eventually equal to mass over volume, okay? We're only given with the edge, which is equal to A, and it's equal to 564 picometer, okay? So from the A, we can get the volume because volume is just equal to the edge cube. So therefore, if we can solve for the volume, and then we can solve for the density for the mass because we know that this is sodium chloride and the number of atoms is equal to four atoms per unit cell. So we can get the mass. So the mass of the sodium chloride will also require us the molar weight, which is equal to 58.45 grams per mole. So we'll have four atoms multiplied by one mole if one mole is equal to 0 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms and then one one mole of course is equal to 58.45 grams so we can calculate now for the mass, which is equal to 3.88 times 10 to the negative 22 grams. Okay, so the next is the volume. For volume, we just need to raise only A to cube, but we have to see to it that the picometer is converted. Two centimeter cube so we can have so if this is a cube then and one times 10 to the negative 12 meter is to one picometer so we'll have to raise this also by cube and then one centimeter is equal to one times 10 to the negative 2 cube so therefore we can cancel the meter can cancel the picometer and what we have is centimeter cube which is equal to 1.794 times 10 to the negative 22 centimeter so therefore we can solve now for the density which is just equal to mass over volume and it's equal to 3.88 times 10 to the negative 22 grams per 1.794 times 10 to the negative 22 centimeter cube. And it gives us 1.26 gram per cc as the density of the NaCl, which is also shown on this PowerPoint how it was calculated and it shows also 2.16 grams per centimeter cube answer. The constituents of a solid can be arranged in two general ways. They can form a regular repeating three-dimensional structure called a crystal lattice, thus producing a crystalline solid, or they can aggregate with no particular order in which case they form an amorphous solid from the Greek word amorphous meaning shapeless. And these are the two examples that was shown for a figure shown for the crystalline quartz and the non-crystalline quartz. For the different types of crystal, we have the covalent crystals which are lattice points occupied by atoms held together by covalent bonds, hard, high melting point, poor conductor of heat and electricity. Example of this are the car is the carbon atom. The second type is the molecular crystals. It has lattice points occupied by molecules held together by intermolecular forces. It is soft, low melting point, for conductor of heat and electricity. 
The third is the metallic crystals. Lattice points occupied by metal atoms, held together by metallic bonds, soft to hard, low to high melting point, good conductors of heat and electricity. And this is uh, showing the cross-section of a metallic crystals. From the periodic table, you can see that the green color are the hexagon close packed, the pink are the face-centered cubic, the blue are the body-centered, and the orange are the other structure which captions are not clearly specified. So these are the different types of crystals for the ionic, covalent, molecular, and metallic. So we have the holding, the force holding the units together, the general properties, and the examples. And that concludes our discussion for the theory involved in exercise 1.3, which is the solid crystalline structure. Hoping that you can answer well the exercise 1.3 that will be uploaded next to this video lecture.